I have an animator that loves Star Wars. And so, first off, I get him, and I get him excited about it, and I have him just charge. Every character starts out with the creator of that character. The well, first thing is a lot of research, and it's, it's a little bit tricky uh, for characters that haven't yet been released. When we started Kylo Ren, we didn't have uh, a lot of reference. There was a lot of secrecy around the film. So a lot of what we came up with for him, we had to speculate. Because Lucasfilm, they didn't want to give out anything. There was a fair amount of questions that we were to throw their way, and we kind of worked with them. Because they're still trying to develop their movie while we're trying to develop and understand their characters. We get as much information as we can from the original creator of that character, and we hand that off to the concept artists, and they will start working on the 2D art. It's a big challenge because we, we have to we're trying to ultimately find something that's appealing. So we, we focus a lot on starting with the big, big shapes. And if that looks appealing, then the little details will layer right on top of it. When we were thinking about Kylo Ren's pose, I mean, we had a general idea of, of where he was going because all we had is visuals. We didn't see the movie yet. We looked at all kinds of fan films. We looked at comic art. We looked at Vader. We looked at anybody and anything Star Wars would uh, help us out. It's kind of like they're right here and we're right here. As long as we're targeting kind of where we're gonna be, then hopefully it's pretty accurate. I think we ended up in a really good spot because um, I think it feels like Kylo Ren, but he's still simplified in the Infinity style. It's really important that it's representative and it's authentic to that character, but it's not that character. Because eventually all these characters have to belong together in the Infinity universe. Even though we have a certain style for Disney Infinity, Every character is kind of a new challenge of trying to figure, bring that character into our style. If you count it right now, I think there's like over a hundred avatars, all on disc. In this process that we've we found ways to get the franchise owners happy about it and stay true to our roots, which is Disney animation, and create things that are really fun and energetic and interesting to watch and do. Like, how do you know when it's appealing? You just kind of know when it happens. We find that stylization that works for Infinity, and then we have to go back to the, the creators, and we say, is this what you feel represents your character the best? Then we hand that off to the 3D modeler. We are essentially interpreters, and so we have to interpret a 2D design into 3D. Now that we have so many characters in Disney Infinity, we have to uh, compare them all, and so they all look like they're supposed to look next to each other. When it gets too thin, it won't print or it won't hold up in the manufacturing process. So like lightsabers, we have to thicken those things up and crazy things you don't really think about unless you're making the things. We'd always be surprised at details that were way too strong on the monitor or details that we thought were strong and were diminished, you know? And so it became clear very early that we needed our own 3D printer to, so we could start getting feedback much earlier and real feedback, you know, of what the figure is really gonna look like. If we're going to make these things, I really don't want them to end up in a box in a closet. If you're not playing the game, I want them to be sitting up on a shelf. And so that process of working with our concept team and all that kind of just came together and prayed what uh, became Infinity.